Okay. Uh, well, I got the cradle casting, the new one, up on the machine here. And I got to bolt it down. Just two clamps, but you got to make sure it's tight. And you got to take it easy when you're milling it because it could dig in and move around and whatnot. So I'm going to machine the sides here, the front, the top, and back here a little bit just to skim this area. Right, actually right in here is all you have to do because that's where part of the cab sits on that. And later on I'm going to drill some holes here, three holes to hold the cab. And then line up, you can't see here in the picture, but right here is where the drawbar goes. There's going to be a hole there, or at least the center drill. And possibly these are where the brakes go. I had to mill that out both sides. I might uh, do that while I got it in the machine. And then you have to turn it over and do the bottom here to a size. Okay? So uh, that'll be done in a vise probably. And then this piece here, while I still have everything off the table, I gotta flip it around. I gotta do the two pads and the and the one pad for for the drawbar pocket piece, which is gonna come off the old the old thing, the old uh, cradle. So now this cradle is flat on the top here. This is right here is flat. That's your plane, and this goes up this way on the bottom. So I measured down from here down to the table, here down to the table, and the difference is about three eighths of an inch difference on this end and on. This end. I have a parallel right under this area. This is kind of hanging out. Let me see if I got. Well, that's down on the table. That's okay. I might put a clamp there to hold it too. It's right on the table itself, right there. Can't get underneath it. So that's good. I might put a clamp right there. And uh, I'm going to machine this. Now, as far as drilling the holes here, uh, I made the original, so I'm a guy that makes everything, I don't just, I use the readout to do it. Or probably at that time I didn't have a readout, I used the dials. But they're all even numbers, and this time around I'm not going to tap this. The old one was tapped, here it is here, the piece. The old one was tapped. But this is all pretty much even, like it starts out three quarter and then three quarter, uh, five eighths, five eighths, five eighths, and uh, uh, this way, you know, and I can measure on this side. It's three quarter here, five eighths, five eighths, five eighths. Well, actually, that's three quarter on that side. Let's see what it on this side. Yeah. But I, I, I may put it in there without the holes drilled and mark mark two of them just to give me a reference to where to put the other hole. So, uh, and I'm going to put through bolts in there. So that means on the back side here I'm going to machine that so it's flat. Uh, so when I put the bolts in they're going to hit flat on the surface. Now if I had a reverse spot facer which goes in from the bottom and comes up I would spot face all of those but I'm just going to mill it down very carefully to get most of it off and uh, I might do it in steps so that it's not making it real thin there. But uh, you got to remember something. I think, I think if I recall, I got to remember this is almost 45 years ago that I made that. But I do have a good memory and I do remember, I think, moving the frames in for seven and a quarter. I might have done that. Uh, but I don't recall that. Uh, not knowing about seven and a quarter, seven and a half at the time I built it. Possibly I just followed the plans. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Mill, 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 mill over there. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of material on here. I did consider putting this straight up in the air against the angle plate and get some of the meat off of this if I laid it out. But if I use a heavy-duty end mill, probably at least a half-inch, five-eighths long end mill, uh, it it, it, it got to be careful that it clears. It's got to clear this area here. So so I might just use a half inch to go in there. But you got to take your time. You got to take your time because that thing will dig in. When you have a long end mill like that, they have a tendency to flip out. So uh, one thing I want to mention here, this is a bridge port, of course. You can see that. 
it's not a copy, it's a real brick board, but that doesn't matter. It's pretty much all the same. This is a 42-inch table. Now, the truth of the matter is, for this piece, yeah, you need a 42-inch table. I also have a milling machine bridge port with a 32-inch table. The original way they made them was 32, then they made them 36, then they made them 42, and then they went 49. Look, if you're looking for a mill and you find one that happens to have a 49-inch table, okay, but you really don't need a 49-inch table. 90% of the time, you're working off the vise, which is in the middle. So the 32 inch is fine for that. I built the whole K4 on that end, on that milling machine, 32 inch table. I didn't do the cylinders because they were already done, but uh, I used the I used the boring mill, which is over there. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start milling it now. Get set up to do it, and uh, we'll uh, take some video of it milling and so on, and uh, uh, hopefully get this done. By the weekend, I got you tomorrow and Saturday. I like to get it done and get it back in, and it's coming along now. I've only been working on it since Monday, so it's four. This is the fourth day, and I'm hoping by the end of this month I should have it pretty much back together and then start some of the new piping. So that's where we're at with it. Uh, we'll see what happens. We're going to start milling now. Okay, uh, taking the first cut on this, I'm using a half inch end mill only because it has to clear a space in between here. And you take your time, you got, you got to take 20, 30, 40 thousandths, no more, and then you got to run back and forth over it a couple of times because the spring builds up. So I just took, a, I got 60 off it right now, I'm going to go another 30. That's 90. Lock it. I'm just, I'm, I'm feeding it by hand because it just, I don't want to screw it up. And uh, if I put on the automatic feed, it could jump. Now she's taking almost a full cut. You can feel it. Now maybe when I get down closer to the line. I'll be able to put a bigger diameter end mill, but uh, right, you know, maybe. I'll see. I don't want to cut this. Whether a bigger end mill will help you, I don't know, because you got to run it fairly slow. And back here, you can hear it all clanging and clickering and whatever. But uh, you know, it's been a long time since I milled this. I had a Rockwell mill. I didn't even have a Bridgeport when I did this. And more than likely, I did it sticking out this way. I don't remember that. I don't think the table was long enough to do it. But there's a lot of little engines, locomotives out there. And a lot of people still building them. Now the railroad supply, Mikado, or now it's uh, Godshaw, that's another controversy, but uh, the, uh, we'll call it the railroad supply designed locomotive. Uh, has a several piece cradle. And the reason is it's easier to machine. However, uh, I prefer a one piece, which I may make a pattern for and another reason why when I I asked Peterson why he did that and what he said was that uh, in case they wanted to put a four-wheel trailing truck under it they can make longer pieces in between well I don't know to me I gotta go easy now you get off it, you can tell. You gotta go back now, slowly back. Take the spring out of it. And you snug up on that a little bit so any backlash. I have a line there to work to. It's even in the middle. 
I got a machine this end also. Now I suppose you could do it up on end. Uh, I don't know. Logically speaking, this looks like the way. Now I did it once. That was 30,000, so I'm going to go back again. You still see it's still cutting because of the spring. Also, it could dig in and move. I never really screwed. I had to line it up again somehow. I don't know if this end mill is that sharp. Maybe, maybe I'll get a new one again. But for right now, I'm roughing it out. I, I might change to a different end mill with the finish. Just get the material off of here. You go a little bit faster on the second cut. Still cutting. Okay. Move another thirty. You want twenty. starting to squeal, it means it's taking more. I'm an eighth of an inch away from the line. There's a lot of material on this. That's all right, I'd rather have more than not enough. I might go to a 5 8 end mill if I have a long one. This is only about a little bit less than two inches. That original, that was aluminum. And tightening it down, springing all over the place. This is a lot better. Get a little harder to turn. I'm turning in at stages. Now, you got to go from this way, because that's the other way, this would be climb milling. So, you want to go this way so you're cutting like that, and then on this side, you want to cut that way. So, it comes around and goes that way. You got to always remember that, that's very important. Because what will happen if you try to climb mill, it'll jump. Because there's a certain amount of play in the machine. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ball screws, yeah, 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 CNC. Uh, we don't have that. We got this. Works. A lot of locomotives are built on bridge ports and less. Less than. Uh, 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 uh. See, not tight enough. I'm getting old. Can't tighten it up no more. I gotta even stand on a thing because I'm too short. Yeah, make a comment, somebody. What do you want from me? I can't help it. Oh, what the hell? Okay, jumped out of gear is what it did. Yeah, okay. This is the back gear lifts up a gear in there and then it goes into another gear to make it go in back gear which is got to hit it in reverse and it wasn't all the way in now it's all the way in and that's what started to slip so I had to readjust this a little bit because you know I did rebuild this bridge port and maybe I just to get it out of adjustment so back up a little bit there we go Just snug up on this. Got to keep the tension off. I I got 
hurry on each one, but I'd rather do it by hand. Well, what a rough finish that is. Bad end mill, I guess. I'll, I'll just get the material off of here. Get it close. Take another cut at the same setting. Not as cutting as much, but... This material here, I know where this casting came from because I've used this foundry before and this is 8535 which really is not the best material to make this out of. 8535 is 85% copper so it's really, that material is really designed for more of a uh, fittings and things like that. 8535 is the one foundry that I used to use, pattern machine and foundry, no longer exists. Um, used to call it spigot. Or they call it spigot. Spigot with a G. But it's a spigot because they used it to make spigots. Simple. Alright, we're going to go to 150. Start in slow. When you're working with a big end mill like that, it can snap on you. Go slow. I can feel it starting to get hard. I need a sharper end mill, but I'm going to use this now. So 85.35 is 85% copper, 5% tin, 5% uh, zinc, and 5% lead. It's not the best material. I would have, well, manganese is tough, tough. Truthfully, iron would be good, but this will all work. It's much better, definitely better than aluminum. Aluminum is the worst. I mean, the original railroad supply Mikado was mostly aluminum. And the guy that got it the second time, Pete Pedersen out there in Utah or Nevada, wherever he is, he changed a lot of it, which is good.